back to Mark Durant and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, for more BYU basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU 54 and South Florida 39 is tonight's final score as BYU advances into the championship bracket of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic here in Honolulu. We are at the Stan Sheriff Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, the home floor for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Hawaii will take on Vanderbilt in tonight's nightcap. BYU on a low-scoring night, 54 points, has a pair of low-scoring leaders set 11 points. Gideon George, 11. And Fusene Traore with 11 as well. Alex Barcelo, 10, all coming in the first half. Gideon George, 3 of BYU's uh, 6 three-pointers on the night. Gideon was 3 for 5 from deep. Gideon, a big part of this hold-off, if you will, of the South Florida Bulls. South Florida held to 39 on the night. No South Florida players got the double figures on the night. And their leading scorer, Caleb Murphy, had one field goal, one for nine for five points on the night. And on the evening, South Florida shoots 26% from the field, 10% from three, 71% from the free throw line. BYU shoots 37, 27, and 75, but those numbers were good enough on this night. And the rebounding numbers certainly good enough, Mark. 48 to 30 was BYU's rebounding edge. It was a night that BYU struggled to hang out of the ball. They turned it over 16 times to South Florida's seven. In fact, BYU had almost as many turnovers as field goals made, 16 giveaways and 18 shots made tonight. Well, certainly it wasn't a pretty game for BYU, but again, I mean, you're playing the a top 15 defensive team. So let's start with that baseline. It's going to be yep. a tougher night for you than what you're normally facing, but what I do like is the fact that BYU just dominated the boards like, like they did, 48 to 30. So, you know, you can, like I was saying with Florida, you make up for some things that you do bad and by doing some other things really well. And BYU uh, rebounded really well. And also BYU, let's not forget, is a terrific defensive team. So they're going to make teams look bad too. And so maybe the game altogether looked bad and BYU didn't do some of the things that we've seen them do, uh, especially you know, three-point shooting and, and other things. But, uh, you know, in this type of game, they did what they had to do and found a way to win. And I like that about this team. They kind of find a way. Let's get to our new skin data discovery of the game. It is brought to you by New Skin, your innovative beauty and wellness company that helps you look, feel, and live better. Mark, what do you like for your data discovery in the box score tonight? Well, again, uh, the other night, BYU dominated the bench scoring, and it was again tonight, 26-13. to 13. I thought Gideon George came in, played well. Obviously, Foose was, was fantastic. So you're getting a lot of production from guys coming in off the bench. That, that, that impresses me, and I, I like the, the fact that this team can go 8-9 and nine deep and Still get good production. All right, BYU by 15 tonight. Again, the uh, most points by which South Florida has lost a game this year. Cougars' score was low, but the, the Bulls' score considerably lower, under 40 tonight as BYU wins it to go to 10-2 and two on the year. South Florida falls to 4-6. and six. BYU into the championship bracket here at the Diamond Head Classic. We'll have much more from courtside coming up with a player and coach interview. Coming up next, though, Jason Shepard recaps your night with the uh, Cougar postgame live program. Scores and more coming up with Shep. For now, we're saying aloha from Honolulu. BYU 54 and South Florida 39 back for courtside and more after Jason. It'll be Cougar postgame live next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The final horn has sounded, and today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Also by First Colony Mortgage, your trusted lender for all your mortgage needs. Visit firstcolonymortgage.com. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. BYU scores 54 and wins by 15. 54-39, the final score. The Cougars advancing to the winner's bracket of the Diamond Head Classic. Still waiting to find out exactly who they are playing and when they are playing. More on that coming up in just a second. Welcome into Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Cougars getting the victory, 54-39, shooting 36% from the field, 27% from three. But 
I agree with Mark. Uh, South Florida, one of the worst offensive teams I've seen. That was uh, that was not a a great that was not a great uh, example of how to play basketball offensively if you're South Florida. But hey, the good news is BYU got the win. That's all that matters. And how about that? Uh, BYU led in scoring by Gideon George and Fusine Troyer, each with 11 points. Really good to see those guys. Uh, coming through and BYU gets the win today they will move on and fans remember when the Cougars win you win with Papa John's Pizza use the online promo code BYU50 at PapaJohns.com tomorrow and receive 50% off pizza this offer is good at any Utah location tomorrow only all right I mentioned BYU still waiting to find out exactly who they're going to play and when they're going to play Earlier today, it was Liberty defeating Northern Iowa 76-74 and Stanford defeating Wyoming 66-63. Those two matchups for tomorrow are now set. Stanford will take on Liberty and Wyoming will face Northern Iowa. BYU will need to wait for this game between Hawaii and Vanderbilt to find out, uh, number one, who they're going to play. If it's Hawaii, they will play Hawaii uh, if it is Vanderbilt, um, it could depend on the, the time. Hawaii is set for the late game tomorrow, regardless whether they win or lose. So Hawaii is going to play at 10 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow, regardless. So if BYU is going to face Hawaii as the winner, they will face them at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, if they face Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt, uh, that game will end up being at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. So still a lot to be determined based off of the outcome of Hawaii and Vanderbilt. That's set to kit, or excuse me, tip off within the next 20 minutes. Uh, let's update you on a couple of scores for you locally. It was Southern Utah and Dixie State T-Birds getting the win big at home. And in top 25 action, some finals, it was number two Duke defeating Va Tech 76-65. Tennessee upsets Arizona 77 to 73. Number 13, Houston takes down Texas State 80 to 47. Back to wrap things up for Cougar Post Game Live and get you back to Honolulu right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougars improve to 10 and 2 as they defeat South Florida 54 39. Welcome back to Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. One uh, bowl game final for you at the Armed Forces Bowl. Army rallies to defeat Missouri 24 22. And the one game still going on in the NBA the Clippers at the Kings in Sacramento. L.A. with a 71-66 lead over the Kings with under two minutes to go in the third quarter. That is a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, we'll get you back to the Stan Sheriff Center for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Gideon George will join Mark and Greg. Your final from Honolulu. Cougars getting the win over the Bulls, 54-39. And you heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive post-game coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. Barcelo, angle left. Barcelo, elbow Game. jumper. Got it! The Cougar Locker Room Show is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Welcome back courtside here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Honolulu, Hawaii, Greg Rubel and Mark Durant with you putting on the headset. In place of Gideon George tonight is assistant coach Chris Burgess. Gideon and uh, I think Coach Pope have all headed back uh, to the hotel, rest up for tomorrow's game against Vanderbilt or Hawaii. Coach Burgess, thanks for popping on the headset and joining Mark and me courtside. Congrats on the win tonight. Yeah, that was – thank you. Um, it was grinded out, as you guys saw, and it's a team that we knew. We knew exactly who – what we thought we were going to get. We thought we were going to get a team that was going to come in, in here and try to just defend us. Um, push it in transition like the first five or six seconds, and if they didn't have anything, grind it out offensively, move the ball, take a lot of long mid-range twos. <laughs> Not a great three-point shooting team. We knew exactly who they were, and our guys um, followed the game plan exactly how we wanted. We wanted certain guys to shoot threes. We wanted certain guys to be run off the three. Uh, we wanted to go under ball screens, and so super proud of our guys the way 
because this is a frustrating game, um, you know, in terms of wanting to score, put the ball in the basket every single time, and having to win on the defensive end in terms of just following scout. It's okay to give up that shot. That's what we're saying. We want the numbers, you know, that's an analytical win for us if they take those shots. And so, um, great win. It's a great win. It's hard to win. And, um, you know, I'm super proud of the guys. Some guys, some games surprise you the way they turn out. This one really didn't. You kind of got the game you thought you were going to get, right? It's exactly, it's, I'm telling you, it's exactly right. Long twos, right? Like, a, a gap them a little bit, force them to take a contested long two, and do not foul them. And they're going to shoot them. And they're not going to make it a high percent. We kept talking about that's an analytical win if we can get them to take long twos and keep them out of the, keep them out of the paint in terms of rim shots. And um, they did that. Our, our guys followed scout. was just like, you know, and so we got certain guys to shoot threes. And, and they, you know, look, they're two for 21. Yeah. And it, that was game plan. Hey, that's okay if he shoots, a, 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 you know, a late contested three. It's okay. We want that, right? It's an analytical win for us. Well, Chris, congratulations. It, it is hard to win. That was a hard-fought win. And I'm just curious how this coaching staff approaches tournament situations. I mean, you had a little bit of time to prepare for this game, yeah. but now it's like one after the other and how you kind of split up scouting responsibilities in the tournament and how much, I mean, can you give two guys too much information yeah. in the short period of time between games? Well, you nailed it on the head in terms of we had, you know, 48 to 72 hours to get ready for this game. So we spent a, we spent a normal amount of time in terms of prepping for this team. It was, it was my scout. Um, and so I had, you know, uh, Monday and Tuesday and today to kind of show them film, show them personnel, show them sets, go through them, you know, and practice live, four and four, five and five, and just what they do. Now, uh, Coach Feger and Coach Robinson, they split up um, the next opponent, which is uh, Vanderbilt and Hawaii. And, and we don't give our guys any, they're going to go home and watch the game, but each of those coaches, along with a scout partner, um, which is our, you know, uh, graduate assistants, they put together a short and a condensed scout in terms of basically it's um you know what is the personnel who are the shooters who are the drivers right what are content what's the continuity offensively they are going to run right or maybe a player two that might trick you um but the base but but in terms of um how are they going to guard right how are they going to guard ball screens how are they going to guard the post do they press do they zone um and then for us defensively it's like okay well how are we going to guard ball screens what are we going to do with the four we're going to do with the five what are we going to do in the post what are we going to do on handoff so we keep we keep our principles our our defensive continuity principles the same um based on those things but we don't want to throw a ton at them right we don't we want them to trust their instincts and just no personnel shooter driver Visiting with assistant coach Chris Burgess will conclude our comments with coach after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Grubel. Courtside here in Honolulu, BYU 54 in South Florida 39. Tonight's final score, Cougar Locker Room Show, brought to you in part by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Brady Industries, honestly better. Learn more at bradyindustries.com. Visiting with assistant coach Chris Burgess. Assistant coach Cody Figure will follow Coach Burgess with us here courtside. Let's talk about how BYU won this game. And there, were, there was a phase late in the first half struggling to score and that was when ab kind of turned it on i think he made eight straight for you yeah. at one point and it kind of pushed the margin to where it needed to be uh, heading toward halftime yeah the, it, and so coach talked about it in the game leading up to it, it was like guys there's gonna be frustration and i'm talking he's like when i'm talking to you guys i'm actually talking to myself <laughs> like you know they're gonna really really guard us is what they do we have to keep fighting through that frustration because at some point you know we're gonna break through and of course it was Alex going back to back with the you know his threes and then they you know the technical foul was also giving AB two free throws and that also got him a little bit going so um, you know we knew it was gonna happen we knew there was gonna be a couple times in this game where it was just gonna be hard to really really score and then there was gonna be a break open we're gonna break it open with a couple buckets but we kept saying guys keep defending keep guarding because if we can keep them out of transition and we can keep them off the offensive glass which we, we struggled a little bit in the second half doing that they're going to struggle scoring, right, because transition and offense rebounds lead to rim shots, and that's what we're trying to take away. I know you work a lot with the big men, Coach, and uh, I combine Caleb and uh, Terore's numbers tonight, 20 points, 23 rebounds between those two, and 
they're kind of at different points in their progression and, and experience. But how, how do you feel Caleb's coming along? Yeah. And how – and just your impressions of uh, Fusini with, uh, you know, as a freshman coming in doing what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, listen, Fus and Atiki got thrown in the fire, right? Their plan and development was a little bit different when Richard Harbour and Gavin Baxter were in the lineup, and then they got thrown into the fire. And what Fus has done – um, with these minutes and this opportunity is outstanding, right? Like him to go against a South Florida team that's in the American Conference and got some physical dudes down there that are sometimes twice the size, you know, and he can rebound. He finishes around the rim. He had two spectacular dunks there. They just don't see a lot, right? And so super proud of him, the way he's growing. Now he's got to get a ton better uh, with getting to the middle, trusting his hook shot, countering at times. Um, and then Caleb's trying to grind, right? He's been thrown in two different spots, positions. You know, he's struggling with his three-point shot, obviously, and so he's trying to get easy ones around the rim, um, which is running in transition, trying to seal lower on the block, right, so his move is not so far outside the paint. Because if he can just take a one bounce or two bounce and get to the middle and go up, you know, he – He's, he's, he's getting better at that. He had signs at Weber State that I was super proud of him when we got to the middle and he finished a right-hand hook. And even a, even a counter to his left-hand layup that he missed, I was still proud of him because of the way he got there. So he, he's got to get better, right, in terms of trusting it and, and taking care of the ball. And if they double or something comes to kick it out, right, make the simple play. Um, but Caleb, Caleb's trying to find himself um, offensively. And he's doing that by rebounding and getting his extra possessions. He's doing that by cutting hard and screening hard and rolling hard. And he's doing that by trying to post and get to the middle. Good shot or good miss or make, I don't care. Just go get to the middle and establish a good jump hook. And, and so he's getting better. And the 14 rebounds for Caleb tonight, a career high awesome. for him. 18 fouls for South Florida. I bring that number up because that's almost twice what they normally foul. They wow. don't foul a lot, and you got to the line enough times against this kind of team tonight. Yeah, you know, we knew it was going to be super physical, and I, someone made the comment afterwards, like, man, it felt like it was way more physical than, like you just said, the 18 team fouls. I mean, they only shot seven free throws, and, you know, we shot 16, but mm -hmm. um, they're a physical team. They come from a conference that is super athletic, and they get after it, and they handshake, and they body you up, and they reach and grab, and our guys played through it. And we had some turnovers, especially early on. We had 10 in the first half, um, but I think our guys settled down a little bit so um, just a good win it's a good yeah. win all wins are really hard and this was a good win did turn it over 16 times but only eight points off those turnovers and that's a, that, that's an acceptable ratio that's an acceptable ratio in terms of our guys sprinting back right hopefully they're dead ball turnovers we can get back when the ball's being inbounded but our guys are sprinting back because they knew how important getting back in transition what was to this team you know was to, to the game plan and so that's a good thing and finally since you're so closely involved with the bigs what did you like out of the 14 minutes that Atiki gave you tonight? Didn't score, but yeah. how's he doing? Hey, man, he started that game off, had a block in the post, rebounded that block, got fouled. You know, there was one catch. He, on a roll, he reached behind it. We were talking about you got to win catches. He catches the ball. You know, he felt the pressure. He was trying to kick out of the corner. It was deflected, but it was our ball. And then, you know, there was a couple times second half I got on, and I was like, hey, you had a good first half, which you did. But, you know, you gave up five points on offensive rebounds, right, where they got he got the rebound, he ticked it off, and there's an and one. And then number, uh, I think it was number 15, 15. Gets it, yep. he throws the little right hand, little bunny over him. And I'm like, hey, for you to be great, and for us to be great, that can't happen, right? So really proud of him the first half. I'm going to show him the film the second half because, again, he was thrown in the fire just like Foose, so we can't have any letdowns. One last important question. I know you play old man ball in the morning with Russ Larson. Has he still has he still got it? Russ has an amazing touch. <laughs> he keeps the ball high, never brings it down where I like to swipe at him. He's a fantastic teammate. We got a little brother-in-law, like gentleman's agreement to call fouls. So we because you know, we just do. Now nah, Russ is great. We, uh, like I've gotten to know him a ton over the last seven years and and um, I know how good he was as a player and when I was when I was younger. So it, it's um, it's fun to get after it and see someone still doing it at his age. We also saw, just sorry, but we saw McKelly here tonight. McKelly Wesley, man, that guy could, that guy could play. McKelly was really good. I played against him his senior year when he was the MVP of our conference. And let's just say we sent a double at him every single possession. <laughs> Coach Burgess, thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, Coach Fieger is coming up next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We'll tell you before we break real quickly that uh, this Cougar Locker Room show is brought to you by Visible Supply Chain Management. From freight to packing, packaging to fulfillment to small parcel services, Visible is driven to reimagine the entire supply chain. Visible Supply Chain Management, a Maersk company. Learn more at VisibleSCM.com. Coach Cody Fieger is next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Is LASIK right for you? At Utah Eye Centers, we've answered that question for over 25 years. With four locations and advanced technology, Utah Eye Centers has more experience and more answers. 
At Utah Eye Centers, we've seen it all. Eliminate the need for contacts and glasses and start seeing more clearly in a few days. Call Utah Eye Centers, where more people have trusted for their LASIK surgery than any other Utah provider. At Utah Eye Centers, we've seen it all. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcies to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. You named your son Steve, Jimmer, and Lavelle. 1984 is a place of joy to you, not a dystopian book. Your blood runs blue, despite what science says. You're BYU, and we get you, because we give it our all to ensure the Cougs can too, be it injury prevention, rehabilitation, or orthopedic surgery. And we do the same for you. Intermountain Utah Valley Hospital, official medical provider for BYU athletics. Learn more at intermountainsportsmed.org. You are listening to BYU Basketball on BYU Radio. What's up, BYU Radio friends? Spencer Linton and Dave McCann here on the latest BYU Sports Nation. We discuss in detail why Tyler Algier might just stay at BYU next season. What are the reasons to come back, the pros and cons? On the next episode, Steve Young joins us to talk about the season and what's next for the Cougars as they get ready for the Big 12. What would he tell the Tyler? Listen on demand, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, or tune in live at noon Eastern for BYU SN here on BYU Radio. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Mark Pope. It's the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Economics Partners, a premier national business valuation firm. Learn more at econpartners.com. Also by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, official credit union of BYU Athletics. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so back courtside where BYU defeats South Florida by a score of 54-39 to tonight. BYU assistant coach Cody Fieger taking the place of Coach Mark Pope for this portion of our postgame coverage. Uh, Cody, thank you for coming on. And Coach Pope and the boys, the players, got right back to the hotel. Rest up and get ready for tomorrow. Yeah, they're... Uh getting back to the hotel as fast as they can so they can watch this Hawaii-Vanderbilt game coming up. BYU gets the winner of Hawaii and Vanderbilt tomorrow night and we don't know the game time yet because they're going to stick Hawaii in the late game no matter what Hawaii does tonight so we have to kind of wait to see. Simple way to put it is if uh, Hawaii wins, BYU plays the late game and if Vanderbilt wins, BYU plays the early game in the evening session tomorrow night. Well, we just heard from Coach Chris Burgess. It was his scout. Yes. And so he got the guys ready for really the kind of game you got tonight, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean... Yeah, Burge was talking about it the last couple of days, obviously, right after the Weaver game. It's just this team will shoot some bad and tough shots, and we just got to rebound this ball. Uh, biggest thing was transition defense from the start and and uh, rebound this ball. And offensively, we knew how good they were defensively. I mean, these guys can really guard. They're really long. Um, seems like there's seven of them out there. They're so long and so quick and so fast. And, you know, a couple times we had a chance to – break it open a little bit some of those shots didn't fall but our guys kept on grinding away and you know finished it with a win yeah i want to hit that point real quick i think it was at that time when you went through a six minute scoring drought in the second half when it stayed at 11 for a while where you felt like kind of you could put the hammer down it didn't quite happen but that's where the turn frustration and the fight thing comes into play right exactly right and that's what coach pope preaches every single day is turn frustration in the fight and our guys just stayed with it you know kept on sharing the ball kept on taking uh, uh, open catch and shoot threes um, and you know Caleb Lohner guys were just flying in there and rebounding and you know that was that was an awesome sight to see well coach congratulations that's a, a nice win for you and I, I'm, I'm wondering how it all works again with this game here I know you've got scouting responsibilities for maybe at least one of these teams but how much do you have ready to go at this point in the game how much will you take from watching this game 
in preparing with the short time frame you have for tomorrow night's game? Uh, I mean, we're going to take a lot from tonight. But right now, uh, I've got Hawaii. Coach Robinson has got Vanderbilt. And we can press. Our guys can watch everything for personnel, and everything's already done. This is just we're picking up some key concepts right now. And, like, Hawaii hasn't played a Division I game since November 30th. Wow. So they've played one game since November 30th. They played one uh, December 8th. And so we didn't know who was going to play. They've had a bunch of guys injured, this and that. And I see right now they're, they're starting small. So, I mean, we're learning a lot about Hawaii real time right now. We'll take a break. We'll continue our conversation with Coach Cody Feger as we come back to Honolulu on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so back courtside here at the Stan Sheriff Center, Honolulu, Hawaii for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. BYU defeated South Florida tonight 54-39. to Chatting about it with BYU assistant coach Cody Feger. Let's get now to our valuable stat of the game brought to you by Economics Partners. Whether for tax, financial reporting, or strategic purposes when your business needs a valuation, the right partner is Economics Partners. Learn more at econpartners.com. And... Maybe we should go to the rebound number for the valuable stat of the game tonight because a plus 18 is a pretty significant margin, and it's more about just margins than it is percentages. But that's a, that's a pretty sizable edge in a game that you thought you could control uh, you know, part of the game, and that's where it was on the glass at 48-30. to Yeah, I mean, the game, oh, the game plan, obviously, was to make them shoot tough shots, and our guys did a good job of that and ended up bricking a lot, so... We grabbed a lot of defensive rebounds. I wish we had a couple more because they had 12 offensive rebounds. I, I'd say about six too many probably, five, six too many. But those turn into only nine-second chance points. No question. No question. Our guys did a good job of doing that. Um, they shot seven free throws. That's pretty good. Our guys guarded without fouling. That's huge. Another stat that jumps out at me is the 26 to 13 on bench points. You had a nice bench performance at Weber as well. You know, I look at Alex and Tijan only getting two points between them in the second half, and yet you were able to really extend the lead. A lot of great bench production. That has to be nice as a coach to have guys step up and play like that. Yes, it is. We got a deep team, and these guys play hard, and they play for each other. And, you know, if one guy's struggling a little bit, the next guy's going to step up and make plays. So that's a great, great thing about our, our guys. So you put yourself on the right half of the bracket, which is half the battle in any tournament. Make sure you get the first one out of the way, right? For sure, yeah. you got to get the first win, and that's most important. And now it's, you know, stay together and, you know, uh, get healthy. You know, make sure our guys are taking care of their bodies, which they're doing a great job of, and then also drinking a ton of water because, you know, this place is rude. Yes. You, I saw you out on the beach. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did get some beach time early today. <laughs> uh, it's a big picture thing, and you'd like to win them all, but you've won 10 times in 12 games. As you look, step back a little bit to what this team has done so far, dealing with all the different adversity you've had to deal with. How proud are you that you've gotten to double-digit wins here in the first 12 games? I mean, really, you know, really proud because we have a bunch of new guys too, and they're all sticking together and and playing for each other, and it, it's it's a really fun team to be be around, you know, and. You know, Foos and Atiki playing a ton of minutes as freshmen, which we didn't expect it, you know, at first. But they're stepping in and doing an unbelievable job. And our senior guards, Barcelo and Tijon, are doing a heck of a job keeping everyone together. Finally, the way this tournament is set up, the break comes between the second and third game. You don't play Christmas Eve and then you play Christmas Day. Now's the quick turnaround. This is the one where you have to get a lot in in a short span of time, including bodies recovering, and try and come back and face a, a really good either Hawaii or Vanderbilt team tomorrow night. Yeah, our guys got to, like we said, drink a bunch of fluids. You know, Coach Shork and Rob are going to get these guys stretched and feeling good, and then they got to really know personnel tomorrow because it's a completely different thing, you know different numbers 23 was a driver tonight and i don't know who 23 is for you know hawaii or whatever can shoot it so our guys just got to get ready and uh, they'll be ready to go well cody thank you for the time coming and joining us courtside and we will see you back in the gym thank you guys go packers man go pack come on <laughs> man, I baby love it. i love it come on a rod oh, gonna man. be mvp again absolutely <laughs> i just you know i just hope you know the d's good playing well but I hope they can get us to the Super Bowl, man. That's I know. All, that's all I ask. Is that too much? <laughs> that's not too much. <laughs> we don't need to run into the Saints. No. We no, don't need to no run into the Saints. Saints. They, they took it to Tom Brady, and 
Yeah. Yeah. A-Rod. Yeah. When Coach Fieger and Mark get together, it turns into pack talk pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. so, beautiful beautiful thing. Nice way to wrap hey, us up. We're on the same page about hoops and football. I like it. <laughs> what else is there, man? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. We'll come back and wrap up the broadcast next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You are listening to BYU Basketball on BYU Radio. All right, so back to wrap things up from courtside here at the Stan Sheriff Center, University of Hawaii, the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Greg Rubel, Mark Durant with you. BYU a winner tonight, 54-39 over South Florida. As the uh, grinding style of play was certainly in evidence tonight. Uh, BYU goes from scoring in the 80s and a weekend win over Weber State to scoring in the 50s and a win against South Florida. Different ways to go about business, Mark, and BYU got it done in the way they had to tonight. Yeah, I, I thought they really played hard and rebounded well and did a lot of good things. One was an ugly game, but you have two good defensive teams playing each other, and so that's going to happen a little bit. But I think, Greg, you know, my tournament experience is this first game is the hardest game because there's just so many distractions in the travel and how you're going to come out and play. If you kind of get that under your belt, then, then it's about who the better team is after that. Well, you mentioned Harvard couple, last time BYU was here. And, so you get that one under your belt. This is an important win, and then I think it's about the, the teams kind of get the, their feet under them, and it's about the best team kind of winning out. And um, BYU might be the best team in this tournament. We'll see. They'll have a tough one. I, I'm thinking my early impression is Vanderbilt will probably win this game, and they've got a really good, skilled big man and some good size. So it'll be a real challenge tomorrow, but good to get this one uh, under their under their belt and a uh, nice, nice effort from the Cougars. Vanderbilt, a 12-6 lead early over the host team, Hawaii. Let's thank our crew tonight before we wrap it up. Appreciation goes out to uh, Andrew Hare and Corbin Radford, our control board operators, Jason Shepard, our studio host, Terry South, our coordinating producer, BYU Radio Engineers, Barry Squires and Sean Fay, our broadcast intern, Trevor Rich, and our thanks to BYU Basketball Media Relations Director, Tyson Jex, as well. Our appreciation to Alex Barcelo for our pregame interview, Coach Pope in pregame, and Coaches Burgess and Fieger in the postgame. And, of course, my color commentary colleague is Mr. Mark Durant. So for Mark and all those folks, my name is Greg Grubel. Thanking you for tuning in. Once again, our final score tonight is BYU 54 and South Florida 39. Tomorrow night we are back with you for more Cougar basketball. It'll be either an 8 o'clock or 10 to 10.30 Mountain Time tip for BYU and Vanderbilt or BYU and Hawaii. And, again, we have to wait to see the outcome of this game to determine when BYU will play tomorrow night. If Vanderbilt wins, BYU will play the 8 p.m. Mountain Time game with the 7 p.m. pregame. If Hawaii wins, it'll be a 10 to 10.30 Mountain Time tip with the pregame starting at 9 o'clock. That'll be our plan for tomorrow night. So that will do it. Greg Rubel saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Basketball on the new skin. BYU Sports Network, good night and aloha from Honolulu, Hawaii. You've been listening to live coverage of BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Coverage of today's game has been brought to you by Economics Partners, a premier national business valuation firm. Learn more at econpartners.com. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Keith Borke, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director for Corporate Sponsorship, Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.